I'm Marty Stauffer. Feathers are a unique adaptation possessed only by birds. Yet as functional as they are, exactly how or why feathers evolved is a mystery. Recreated from one of the few fossilized bird skeletons, this early avian ancestor was named Archaeopteryx, meaning ancient wing. Living 140 million years ago, this lizard-like bird had scales, teeth, and clawed forelimbs. Yet unlike other prehistoric reptiles, it had feathers, remarkably similar to those of modern birds. We know that birds descended from reptiles, but fossils have yet to reveal whether feathers evolved primarily for flight or for warmth. Either way, these delicate structures gave birds a powerful survival edge. With the ability to exploit every current of wind, Few places on Earth remain uninhabited by birds of a feather. Birds enjoy the ultimate freedom, the freedom of flight. An aerial perspective gives these bluebirds an added advantage in hunting their prey. Gravity shapes the lives of all earthbound creatures. It limits their size and movement. Birds, however, are able to defy gravity. They can soar for hours with hardly a wing beat, or hover motionless on wings beating 80 times per second. During flight, bones, muscles, heart and lungs all work in concert with feathers. Interestingly, the one with the least number of feathers is also the most skillful flyer, the hummingbird. Throughout history, humans have tried to unlock the mysteries of bird flight. Yet it was only after the recent invention of slow motion photography that we began to understand the physics of their aerial skills. Most of the dozen or so North American hummingbirds can be found in southern Arizona. Even in the driest deserts, wherever there are flowers in bloom, there are hummingbirds. 
This family is full of superlatives. They are the smallest of all birds, yet they have the largest flight muscles relative to their size. And they have the highest metabolism per weight of any warm-blooded animal. To fuel a tiny body, a hummingbird depends on nectar, a high-energy food also consumed by many insects. Of all their notable features, Hummers are best known for brilliant colors. Audubon once described them as glittering fragments of the rainbow. Band-tailed pigeons are also decorated with patches of iridescent color. Birds profit from colorful plumage in many ways not the least of which is to attract the opposite sex. The shimmering neck feathers of these band tails are visual language. Such colorful markings communicate messages of species recognition, courtship readiness, and danger alert. Even so, birds must balance the benefits of flashy feathers with the risks of making themselves conspicuous to hawks and other sharp-eyed predators. For some, the risk seems well worth the gamble. With steep canyons and forested glens, the Chiricahua Mountains in southeastern Arizona support a rich diversity of bird life. One of the rarest residents here is the elegant trogon. Trogons inhabit the sycamore groves where they nest in tree hollows or abandoned woodpecker holes. Both the male and the less colorful female tend to their brood. Other beautiful birds live here as well. The painted redstart, the house finch, and Bullock's Oriole, to mention just a few. Just as social behavior influences bird coloration, so do environmental conditions. Along the coast in Alaska, Birds forsake eye-catching hues for the more cryptic, neutral tones. Like other members of the auk family, pigeon guillemots are clad in black and white. The bright bill of the tufted puffin is one of few vibrant features in this rocky environment. Natives of the tundra, snow buntings nest farther north than any other land bird. And a dunlin probes the soft mud for worms and other slithery morsels. A black belly patch is the trademark of this sandpiper. Feathers offer the sharp-tailed grouse camouflage, but even more importantly, they offer warmth. Their legs and feet are feathered to reduce heat loss and prevent sinking into the snow when they walk.
A snowy owl's feathers are also specially designed for its way of life. A facial disc formed by highly sensitive feathers receives sounds and channels them to the ears. A thick blanket of feathers covers it from head to toe, enabling it to survive where no other owl can, on the lemming populated tundra high above the Arctic Circle. Woodpeckers have modified tail feathers, which are unusually stiff and durable. So equipped, a woodpecker can prop itself against a tree trunk for better leverage. For birds at home on the water, like these trumpeter swans, Waterproof feathers offer buoyancy. Canada geese breed early in the spring. To keep their eggs warm, they insulate their nest with fluffy down. Showing strong fidelity, a pair constantly confronts its neighbors during the breeding season. But should an intruder wander too near, the entire flock rallies to drive it off. Children have a natural curiosity about wild animals. I brought Hannah and Luke to this pond to help them discover more about the wonder of birds and the unique adaptation of feathers. The babies hatched and they went away, but this was the nest they were in. Do you know what a bird has that no other animal in the world has? Wings. Wings. Wings? Yeah, you're right, but what else? Feathers. That's right. Do you know what feathers are for? Flying? Well, they're for flying, but there's two different kinds of feathers. Some feathers are for flying, but these feathers, these soft ones, this down, see this real soft stuff? This is for keeping warm. This is for insulation. Keeps them warm whenever it's wet or whenever they get cold. Just like the feathers that down comforters are made of. They grow under the bird's flight feathers and trap warm air. Luke, this is a down feather. Let me show you another kind of feather. Yeah. Here's one. Do you know what this feather is used for? Yeah. What do you think? I don't know. This is a flight feather. Okay. Well, it's called a contour feather. And it grows on a bird's body, wings, and tail. See how you can ruffle it and then run your finger through it? And look, it's like magic. It becomes smooth and flat again. You know how it does that? Well, there's thousands of tiny hooks in the feather and they interlock. It's kind of like Velcro. These hooks keep it streamlined so the air will flow over the feather instead of blowing through it. 
This is what allows the bird to lift off the ground. You've seen birds preen, right? Well, preening helps to get their ruffled feathers back into shape for flying. They use their bills, just like I'm using my fingers here, to zip the feather smooth again. What are you doing? Never I do. Oh, are you trying to tickle? You know, I forgot. Feathers do so many wonderful things, I forgot that feathers are just about best for tickling. <laughs> Let's go, silly. Much can be learned about birds by watching them in our own backyard. One of the most curious rituals birds engage in is called anting. Ants secrete formic acid whenever disturbed as a chemical defense. Somehow, birds discovered that formic acid is a natural pesticide against mites and other parasites. Eventually, the trick caught on. Over 200 bird species use ants to disinfect their feathers. This gardener keeps away troublesome rabbits and voles by scattering mothballs among the flowers. The odor of mothballs not only repels garden pests, it attracts birds. Grackles have been known to use these acrid smelling balls as a substitute for ants. As advantageous as feathers are, they have one drawback. They need constant care. As they preen, most birds coat their feathers with an oil secreted by a gland above their tail. This waxy oil has several functions. It keeps the feathers smooth and flexible and thus retains an interlocking waterproof structure. And it also inhibits the growth of bacteria and fungi. Like solar collectors, the outstretched wings of a vulture draw warmth from the morning sun. With broad, rounded wings, a vulture can float on rising columns of warm air. The shape of a bird's wing is a good indicator of its lifestyle. The long, pointed wings of a jeer falcon 
are designed for speed and maneuverability. Though not as fast in level flight, the Peregrine Falcon is legendary for high-speed dives. A Peregrine usually attacks from above, streaking toward quarry at over 175 miles per hour. Climbs again, readying for another attack. The ability to fly does make it easier for birds to escape attack from mammalian predators, but the skies are not entirely safe. Many birds of prey, like the peregrine falcon, evolved to exploit their aerial kin. Birds are worthy of our admiration, if not only for skill in flight, then for an amazing versatility. They have conquered the skies in search of food, and they have also capitalized on the bounty of the Earth's waters. With webbed feet for propulsion and serrated bills for gripping slippery prey, common mergansers are well equipped to catch minnows.
Birds inhabit almost every corner of the Earth. They can fly as high as 20,000 feet or dive in the ocean to a depth of 800 feet. And to what do they owe this widespread success? The simple feather, that most ingenious of evolutionary inventions. Few of nature's creations surpass the feather in beauty or function. Its simple yet intricate design is truly a marvel of engineering. And because of the feather, birds have always inspired mankind with their graceful and effortless command of the sky. Other creatures may be endowed with the gift of flight, but nothing else lifts our spirits like birds of a feather. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.